Hey guys, we are back with more Kingston Front Knights franchise mode in Nissan Hockey Manager. And in this one, we have the awards, we have free agency, and we have the CHL import draft in that order. We're also going to take a look at the NHL entry draft, see where our guys in Anthony Iguano and Billy Constantino go. See what teams they go to, see what pick they are taking with. So we'll listen up to the awards here, which should be tomorrow, the 31st. Yep, here we go. So the Eddie Powers Memorial Trophy. What is that for? That is, uh, let's see. Awarded the player who leads the league in scoring at the end of the regular season. That is awarded to Owen Sounds, Sean Dursey, Ryan Merkley, and Adam Bockvist were the runner-ups. Red Tilson Trophy, also to Sean Dursey. And Bockvist and Merkley came in third. What's the Red Tilson Trophy? Most, most outstanding player in the regular season. Max Kaminsky, Kaminsky, uh, Max Kaminsky Trophy, also Sean Dursey of Owen Sound. So uh, speaking of which, Owen Sound are the OHL champions, so <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, and the Max Kaminsky Trophy, also Bockvist and Merkley as the runner-ups. So let's see what this is. Uh, awarded to the defenseman who demonstrates throughout the season the greatest all-around ability in the position. All right, so basically the, the Norris. All right. OHL goaltender of the year, Michael DiPietro of Ottawa. Runner-up was Jordan Cui and Yuko Pekalukkanen. OHL best forward, Sault Ste. Marie's Barrett Hayton was the best forward in the OHL. Followed by Lucas Chiodo and Blake Murray. Blake Murray of the Sudbury Wolves and Lucas Chiodo of the Barry Colts. M's family trophy, Adam Bockwist. Runners-up were Jacob Perot and Bodie Wilde. Jacob Perot of Sarnia, Bodie Wild of Saginaw. And uh, what is this trophy for? Awarded the player selected as the most proficient in the first year of his league. So, Rookie of the Year. Very nice. Uh, Bobby Smith Trophy. Ottawa Goes to Ottawa left winger Austin Keating. And Sean Dirtsey came in second. And Cameron Hillis came in third. Was the Bobby Smith Trophy. Awarded the player who best combines on-ice performance with success in school. Okay, that's a... It's pretty, uh, pretty cool award there. Uh, Leo Lalonde Memorial Trophy. Owen Sound defenseman Sean Dirtsey. Uh, he looks, oh yeah. Let's see his point totals. 90 points on the season. 722 average rating. Yeah. Uh, he he wins the Leo Lalonde Memorial Trophy. And he held off Adam Bockwist and, and Ryan Merkley. Basically those three throughout this entire season of awards. Uh, is awarded the most outstanding averaged or uh, overaged player, rather not not average, overaged player. Okay. OHL star player award, Sault Ste. Marie's Barrett Hayton, and then he held off Blake Murray and Ryan Merkley. William Hanley award goes to Kingston's Matt Hotchkiss. There you go. All right, and runner up Ian DeRugs. There you go. We had two two nominations for that award. In, uh, in Ian Durung is in Matt Hotchkiss. Then Jacob Perot came in third. What is the William Hanley Award? Uh, awarded the player uh, adjudged to have e exhibited the best type of sportsmanship and gentlemanly conduct combined with a high standard of playing ability. Okay. So Hotchkiss and Durung is definitely guys who we want to hold on to. Unfortunately, it looks like this is Hotchkiss's last year. He's 21 right now. I don't think he has another year of junior el eligibility. Uh, yeah, I would say right here because Durung's it says has one more year left, but I don't think. Yeah, I think Hotchkiss Hotchkiss's time in juniors is done, unfortunately. So uh, good on him to win that award uh, on his way out. It looks like Dan Snyder Memorial Award, Oshawa left winger Cole Resnick, and he held off the challenge of both Evan Bouchard and Ben Badalamenti. Uh, let's see, what is the Dan Snyder Award? It is given to the player who has made a noteworthy humanitarian contribution to the sport. All right. Uh, Matt Layden Trophy it goes to Ottawa's Andre Turigny. Turigny? <laughs> uh, Runner-up was James Richmond and George Burnett. So let's see, what is the Matt Layden Trophy? Uh, presented to the coach, a judge to have contributed the most to his team's success. So coach of the year. And the Wayne Gretzky Trophy goes to Owen Sounds, Kevin Hancock. While the runner-up was Maxim Suchko and Sean Dirtsey. Now, what is it? what exactly is the Wayne Gretzky Trophy? Um, most valuable player for his team in the playoffs. Yeah, figures. <laughs> so, uh, OHL Player of the Month. 
uh, Lucas Chiodo. And Rookie of the Month is Maxim Zukov. Praise for Owen Sound Defense. Okay, so that's it for the awards. So next up, I believe on June 16th, is the start of free agency. Yes, indeed. So we will get to there uh, so that we can see what free agents are available. Now, this again, this is my first uh, junior GM mode in East Side Hockey Manager, so I'm very interested to see what happens uh, as far as free agency goes and, and really the import draft as well. Really everything about the junior GM mode is new to me. So uh, we're going to go ahead and see what happens. Halifax fans celebrate winning the Memorial Cup. So the Halifax Mooseheads have won the Memorial Cup. And uh, yeah, they win the Canadian Hockey League as well, which is the Memorial Cup pretty much. So uh, they they won over Owen Sound. So it's good to know that the Memorial Cup is in here. I was, I was starting to doubt it a little bit. But uh, it's, it's good to see that it's actually in here. All right. So it is June 16th, which means free agency time. Let's see. Who is a free agent in the OHL? Now, unfortunately, <laughs> this is going to show us young NHL players who still have uh, OHL rights. So we could technically go after them, but, you know, they're obviously not interested <laughs> in going back to juniors. So what we need to do here, uh, there's Quinn Hughes. I wouldn't imagine he... Yeah, no, he's he's going to the NHL, for sure. I wouldn't imagine he wants to go back to juniors. He's in college already, so... Yeah, no point in that. Let's see, Nico Gross. Okay, so what we can do here is we can ask if... Filter unrealistic targets, meaning that our assistant coach is going to filter out any player who just doesn't want to play junior hockey. So we'll do that. And there you go. This is looking a bit more like it. So I'm going to see if we can find any, anyone who's like 17 years old. Here's a 16 year old, Bryant O'Brien from Millbrook, New York. He's aiming to play Canadian major junior hockey. So, but would he be an upgrade from our current defense? Is the thing. Well, we don't have much of a scouting report on him, so I would say, and based off his history, I would say no. He's got that 633 average rating at the National Collegiate Development Conference. So I don't think it'll be much better, if at all, at the junior level. Let's see. Thomas Grant. Good work rate. I don't see anything else, though. <laughs> oh, ooh. That 468 average rating. No, thank you. All right, let's see. Let's, uh, let's actually sort by age as well. I want someone between the age of, yeah, sure, 12 and 18. <laughs> so uh, there's Brian O'Brien, or Bryant O'Brien. There it is. Thomas Grant, Caden Messier, Jamie Guay. Let's start by reputation here. It's already started by reputation. Greg Zdinich. Travis Pouliot. Cade Lemmer. Miko Petman. Petman might not be a bad pickup. He's got that 76 for anticipation. A half decent physical category. 74 creativity. Uh, 75 for deking. 59 off the puck. 60 wrist shot. He'd be a good power play player. For sure. He played in the Finnish League last year. 681. I mean, yeah, he, he looks like he could fit in. And considering that we have a bunch of overage players, or at least we did. Yeah, the, all the overage players are off the roster now. I, I'm not expecting Velarde to come back. So just given the, all of our current players who have not a great average rating, I would say we could go after Miko Petman here. Yeah. Yeah, I like him. Uh, oh, he did. Okay, he needs to be drafted, right? Okay, so that rules that out. 
<laughs> yeah, because I already, I've already scouted out players that I want to take in the import draft, and they're better than Petman. So we'll leave him alone, obviously. Uh, Hardy Nolan. Not yeah. Here, here's the thing: is that a lot of these players don't have a scouting report. Like we don't even know a lot of their technical category, which is not good. Ben McFarlane, no. David Andrzejczyk from Chatham, New Jersey, eh? So he's got that 71 anticipation. Good shooter. Deflections, deking, off the puck. I guess you never know. What's his history looking like? He had, he had 12 goals with, uh, with uh, the New Jersey Midget Devils. In eight games. That's a 7-13 average rating. Would I be able to sign him? Was he drafted? Yeah, he's been drafted. Okay, so we'll get him as a hot prospect. David Andrzejczyk. Yeah, sure. I mean, why not? May as well. He had, again, he had 12 goals in eight games. So, let's see if that could translate to the junior level. Here's another good goal scorer. Rory Karens of the North End Flames in the hockey Northern Ontario. Okay. I feel like that should be Northern Ontario hockey, but whatever floats your boat. <laughs> Scouting report. Shot and scoring is an A minus. Hockey sense is an A. So I, I don't like the right side there, but just given that he has a pretty good, pretty good shot. He's playing the OHL before as well. And he had seven average rating in 26 games with Sault Ste. Marie. Hmm. I don't want to go overboard here because we're, because we had, uh, you know, we had Connor Lockhart, who's also a goal scorer, who will probably end up playing for us this year. But at the same time, we just, we, we had so many just underwhelming forwards that I feel like I should kind of give him a shot. How old is he? 17. Yeah. Yeah, I'm giving this guy a contract for sure. Now, I would, I would like to get a defenseman at a free agency as well, because our, our entire decor was, other than Aguano and Jacob Murray and maybe a little bit of Constantino, wasn't that great. So this guy, Noah Marino, we don't have much on him, but we do have that he has a 71 for positioning, along with a 49 poke check. So I'm hoping that the rest of him is good enough to be a serviceable defenseman in the OHL. He's 17 years of age, so he's he's a good age. You can have him for a few years. Fringe player on the team. Hmm, okay. That's a little scary. The fact that the player himself says he's a fringe player. <laughs> Whatever. I mean, we, we need defensemen, so I'll give it to him. Okay, now here's someone who might really be able to help out defensively. 65 positioning, 53 poke check, 45 hitting, 54 checking, 65 anticipation, and a pretty decent teamwork and work rate as well, 74 strength, a 54 balance. I mean, he's good positionally. Got the poke check. See his scouting report. Yeah, B for defense, A for hockey sense. I love his right side. Yeah. Two-way defenseman, number one, two potential. Like Chris Tanov. He's got a four-star current rating, so I I, I don't see what... Ah, import draft. Okay. Yeah, that's why not. So, yeah, that's that's a going to be a problem that we run into here with all these free agents is that some of them might still have to be drafted. Okay, so I think we're going to stick to what we have in this free agency because... We do have prospects such as Tobias Pelletier, who we got in the draft. Hogan Glover. Uh, I'm not sure if Harrington's going to play, but we do have enough defensive prospects that uh, I feel comfortable with not going after any defensive free agents. But we did desperately need uh, forward free agents. Even though we do have, again, we do have a lot of forward prospects. But... Uh, I think the only one that's ready 
really for the OHL is uh, what's his name, Connor Lockhart, because he's got that eighty-one wrist shot. I mean, he's already got an NHL wrist shot. He's gonna be sniping on goaltenders left and right in the OHL, and that seventy off the puck. Whew, this I have a feeling this kid's gonna be good. Now he's signed with the North End Flames. So I hope we'll still be able to, you know what, I'm going to offer him a contract right now. Can we even sign him? He's 16. We should be able to. Okay, we cannot sign him to a contract right now. Ugh. Don't like that. Can we sign anyone to a contract? No, we can't. Okay. Cool. <laughs> so yeah, as I said, completely new to this. So, presuming we get our free agents, let's move along to the CHL import draft. We apparently have more awards here. Uh, Canadian top scorer of the year goes to Sean Dirtsey. Canadian player of the year, Cal Foot. Canadian defenseman of the year, Cal Foot. Goaltender of the year, Prince Albert Ian Scott. So this is awards for all of the CHL, it looks like. Canadian goalie of the year, or rookie of the year, actually, Adam Bockvist. Sportsman of the year, Sean Dirtsey. Coach of the year, Marc-Andre Dumont of Cape Breton. Uh, plus minus award, Tristan Dijon of Moncton. Uh, rookie All-Star team. Ian DeRungs. There you go. Ian DeRungs is on the All-Star team for the entire CHL. And there we go. All right. So David Andrzejczyk has decided to sign with your Kingston Front Knocks. There you go. So welcome to Kingston, David Andrzejczyk and Noah Marino. And Rory Karens. There you go. All right. So we got all of our free agents. And the import draft is going to take place in one week. And again, I already have pre-scouted some guys to uh, so that we can get through the CHL draft quickly. Uh, although there, are, I, I did, did some pre-scouting for the import draft as well. It turns out there's only two rounds. So, you know, four players I figured should get us through that. Reserve list notification. We need to reduce the amount of players we have on the reserve list. So we may as well cut some overage players here. We're going to cut... I'd say Keenan Southers. I don't remember him being on the team. It looks like he's playing in college anyway. So he probably, yeah, he doesn't want, even want to sign, so we'll release him. Tyson Gilmore, he's 20. He doesn't have anything. Yeah, he simulates really bad. I'll just release him straight up. That should fix it, but I, we still have the import draft coming up, so... We're going to have to release more guys anyway. So this guy played for Kingston of the Canadian Junior Hockey League Central. And he actually played for the Kingston Frontenacs back in 2014. Oh my. So yeah, he's pretty old. Yeah, I don't, I don't think he, had any, he has any junior years left on him anyway. Yeah, we'll just release him. I'll keep Hotchkiss for right now. I'll keep Cranford. Just in case they're eligible to return. I don't think so, but... You know, they, they were... Especially Hot, Hotchkiss was good for us. Ryan Cranford, what, not as much, but... So, Mac Hancock, aiming to play college hockey. So, we're just going to release him straight out. Any Anyone who's aiming to play college hockey, we're just going to release. Because there's no point in keeping them on. As we can't sign them. Okay, so here we go. Anthony Iguano, drafted by the Anaheim Ducks in the second round. There you go, Iguano. He was supposed to go in the fifth round. Anaheim took him in the second round. There you go. So let's, let's see here. Yep, drafted number 43 overall. You got a good one, Anaheim. You got a real good one there in Anthony Iguano. And Constantino, drafted by the Washington Capitals in the second round as well. So there you go. Not too shabby. Where did Constantino go? He went 56th. To the Washington Capitals. So Washington, Anaheim, you got a couple of good ones there. And we'll definitely keep an eye on uh, Aguano and Constantino throughout their careers. Just to keep tabs on them. Alright, so here we go. CHL import draft about to begin. And the teams will draft eligible players in reverse order of the season standings. We will pick ninth. Alright, so as you can see by, my, uh, by the highlighted players. Keep my eye on Alexander Holtz. He's got a good mental category, good wrist shot, and decent basically everywhere besides slap shot, hitting face-offs, and deflections. So I definitely want to keep an eye on him. 
Another guy, Isaac Anderson. This guy looks really good. He not not quite NHL ready, I wouldn't say, but almost there. So I have a feeling if we could get Isaac Anderson on board, that'd be great. That would be really good for this team. And then also Alexander Popovich. Uh, he, again, he's got good off the puck, good stick handling, good mental category. And other than this top row here with checking, deflections, deking faceoffs, and hitting, he is good at everything else at the OHL level. So definitely want to keep an eye out for him. And one other guy who is on my list is Ilya Mironov. So he's actually unranked and Capocacco's up here, but there's no way, there's absolutely no way he's being, being sent back to the, <laughs> to the, uh, to juniors by Colorado. If we can, we're going to be drafting Ilya Mironov into juniors because if we can get our hands on this guy, I don't think he's going to be in the NHL this year because he does have a lot of oranges in there. But that being said, all those oranges are very, very good for the OHL level. 66 slap shot, great mental category, good physical category as well. I would love to get my hands on Ilya Mironov and bring him over to the OHL for a couple of seasons. Let's see, Victoriaville, seventh. Oh my. They took Yusuf Parsinen. So if Bjarnfoot's still there, we might take him. He was drafted by the Edmonton Oilers. However, I don't think he's going to be in the NHL this year. It doesn't look like it. He might, but it doesn't look like it. So I wonder if that's why teams are being cautious about Bjarnfoot. All right, well, let's see. Try City. They will not take Bjarnfoot. Hmm. They, oh, they took Alexander Holtz, one of my guys. That's unfortunate. So, crossing him off the list then. So, Isaac Anderson's still available, if we want to get him. And I don't think Anderson's going to be... No, he hasn't even been drafted pro yet. So, he would be a safe pick for sure. But, do we want Bjarnfoot, who was taken by the Edmonton Oilers second, uh, 20th overall in this past draft, and have a chance of him not coming back? Or, we get an amazing defenseman. To replace Anthony Aguano for a year or two. Might have to consider that. Given that he's still available. Patrick Pristolas is still available as well. He was drafted by Tampa Bay in round number three. Now it's just a matter of do I take Isaac Anderson. Well, we have Connor Lockhart. Who I'm not even sure if we can sign yet. Because I, I tried signing him and it didn't give me the option to. So I, I don't know if we can sign him. But Isaac Anderson... Hmm. Well, both Bjornfoot and Anderson are good picks. Ah, even though this might be a wasted pick, I can't ignore Bjornfoot. I cannot ignore Bjornfoot. I really can't. So I'm I'm gonna take him. We'll see what happens with him, as far as Edmonton goes. But if we can manage to get him on our team for a couple of years, that is definitely not a bad thing. All right, so let's hope that Isaac Anderson is available with our next pick. Now, keep in mind, there's only two rounds in the CHL import draft, and we don't pick next until the second round of seventh overall, and there's 60 picks in one round. So he very well may not be there, but we always have that other guy. What's his name? Ilya Mironov who I don't think, even though he was drafted by Anaheim 12th overall, I don't think based off his current attributes that he'll be going back. So if we get two solid defensemen in Mironov and, and Bjarnfot, that'd be great. All right, here we go. Fast forward. Oh, he's still available. So is Patrick Pistola. So that's interesting. <laughs> He was supposed to go second overall. It's now 67th, and he is still there. So I, I don't know if that's just because he's been taken by Tampa. I, I don't know if teams are wary of that. I mean, I guess they might be. Considering all these guys appear, 
have been drafted. Well, the thing is, Isaac Anderson hasn't been drafted yet. So I don't know why that many teams are passing on him. He looks like a great forward. You know what? I was going to take Mironov, but now that we have Bjarnfot, I'm going to take Anderson because I was not expecting Anderson to be available at 67. He's ranked 15th. I think we could really use Anderson. We could really use Isaac Anderson. Welcome to Kingston. Fast forward, and that should be it. Yep. So uh, Patrick Pistola <laughs> went undrafted. Interesting. So uh, again, I guess I would have to guess that the fact that they were drafted in the NHL was uh, was sort of scaring teams off. But for me, I, I'm taking a risk here with Bjarnfot because he could be good. He could be really good. Approach the sign. Hot prospect. No interest in negotiating terms as an excellent prospect for the future. Okay. What about uh, something else? What, what if we gave him a key player? Set player status? No. Okay. Cool. So we're going to have to wait a few days to sign him. <laughs> uh, what about Anderson? Can we sign him right now? Yeah, it looks like we can. Key player? No interest in negotiating terms. Sick. So we may have just... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why he wouldn't want to sign. He wasn't drafted anywhere. Does he just not want to come over to to uh, to North America? And it's possible. Hopefully he does, because <laughs> that that would really suck. That would really really suck if we just burnt two import draft picks. Uh, but with that being said. Let's see if we get to sign Connor Lockhart now, because it's been quite a bit. No, we cannot. Okay, so hopefully we can sign him by the start of the season. Otherwise, we might be in trouble. We might be in trouble. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, we cannot sign any prospects right now. Can we even sign Hotchkiss? I mean, it's telling us we can, but... Just the fact that he's already 21, I don't think he has another year of eligibility. We still have his rights, so that's good. Same thing for Mitchell Byrne. So we'll see what happens there, but... I, I guess that's it for right now. That's all I had planned to do for this episode, was the, uh, the awards, the free agency, and the import draft. So uh, we'll see how much of a disaster <laughs> the import draft was. But uh, that'll just about do it. So in the next one, we will, well, we should start year number two with the Gangster Front Knox, presuming there's nothing else. And it doesn't look like it. So yeah, I guess the next one, we will start year number two. See you guys then.